Hello folks, this is Cameron from Mainline Magic. I'm here today to give you a little bit of a deck tech. Uh, one of the decks that I will be playing with on this channel a little bit. It is Death and Taxes Legacy. So if you're wondering about the hat, let me just uh, get this out of the way. I'm a bald-headed guy. And with these lights, I don't want it shining, blinding you while uh, I'm trying to uh, do the video. So uh, I figured the hat would uh, take care of that. So... Grand Prix New Jersey. So that's happening next week. So I will be playing Grand Prix New Jersey, but not in the main event. What I will be doing is one of these packages. So Channel Fireball has done a pretty fantastic job of pretty much making sure there is a little bit for everyone. And because of the Star City Games Tournament in January that I'm preparing for, I'm going to be playing the Legacy Fanatic package. I'm hoping other people want to as well. Otherwise, I wasted 100 bucks on six empty events. But I'm pretty sure that, especially in the East Coast, there seems to be a lot of interest in Legacy in the Philadelphia area as well. So I'm expecting a good crowd. I'll be playing Death and Taxes, and which is the purpose of this video is to go over that deck tech. All right, so let's get into this deck. So let's start with the mana base. Mana base? Well, it's got a little bit of a prison component. Rashad and Ports. Tap to add colorless mana. Or you can tap Rashad and Port and a colorless mana to tap target land. It can be any land. It could even be a basic land, which is what one of the beauties behind Rashad and Port. Wasteland is the next land. Everybody knows Wasteland. It's like Strip Mine, but a little bit worse. A little bit fair. Well, let's say that. And then Caracas. Caracas is there for, well, one, to save my own Thalia, because she's a legendary. And I love that about her. Two, it works really tricky with um, Mangara of the Corondor. Hopefully I said that right. You can do a little trick with this card. To be honest with you, you may see me mess it up on Magic Online because I'm not very good at this combo. Terrible at this combo. Holding priority. You must hold priority when you tap this. Essentially, you can exile another target permanent and you put Mangara back in your hand. Nifty little combo. The last part of the mana base is, other than just the basic planes, the Flagstones of Trocare. And we'll go with that. Uh, those are there for deck thinning. Uh, in my paper version of this, I run Horizon Canopy, which also thins your deck a little bit, plus it draws you a card, which is nice when you're flooding out. And Cavernous Souls is the last land that's there to prevent people from countering your humans, which most of this deck is humans. If you look, Mother Ruins is a human. Stoneforge Mystic is not a human. Bathalia is a human. Palace Jailer is a human. Marin Crusader is a, is a human. Sanc Sanctum Prelate is a human. And Recruiter of the Guard is a human. Aether Vial. Aether Vial is one of the tools of this deck that makes it work. Aether Vial is the one and only way other than Cavern of Souls that you are going to resolve half of these creatures. People want to counter your stuff. They don't like this deck. This deck doesn't let them have fun. This is a prison deck. They don't want to be in prison. They'll go kicking and screaming if they have to. Aether Vial is a critical component of any Death and Taxes deck for that reason. We need to resolve our spells. So I kind of bled into my <laughs> creatures section of this deck tech, which is what I might as well go into now. So Mother and Ruins. This little one, one who could. A lot of people call her mom. Why do they call her mom? Because she watches over the children. She watches over her little recruiter of the guard. And she is the protector of this deck. She's what makes this deck kind of work. So, when you run out Mother of Ruins on turn one, don't be surprised if people are terrified of her 
and Swords to Plow her sh shares her right away. That will happen. Aether Sworn Canonist. So this one is a little bit of a controversial one. A lot of people don't run this. I run it because of a lot of Storm's tendrils that's been hopping around the internet lately. But I don't run it in paper. I don't really run into a lot of Storm tendrils in my playgroup. But I see it a lot online. In my paper version of this deck, I run the four Revoker package. So I'm replacing a Revoker with the Aether Sworn Canonist in this deck because of the Storm component. Stoneforge Mystic is your go-to threat when it comes to a lot of legacy decks. They want to search up a Jitae, a Sword of Fire and Ice, or a Batter Skull. Those are kind of the go-to targets. I'm running a Sword of Light and Sh Shadow as well in the, um, in the sideboard, but I don't really do that in my paper version. So there are some differences in the paper version than this online version. The heart of Death and Taxes Legacy, as it is with Modern, is Thalia, Guardian of Thraven. She is a boss. Boss. She will get killed many, many times. People target her. She is the biggest nightmare for half of the metagame. Sarah's a vendor is just a one of. She's there really as a threat. I need a 3-3. Put her in with Vile. It's great. Revoker. Revoker is important. You might say, what can this little 2-1 bug, whore, don't call him a whore, he doesn't like that. Um, what does this little revoker do for me? Well, let me tell you, he does a lot. We got a toolkit piece here in Recruiter of the Guard, just lets us search up most of our creatures. The Flicker Wisp. Flicker Wisp is not, it's a good creature, but it's not as impressive just at first glance it's when you tie it together with aether vial an instant speed exile target permanent brilliant it's just brilliant yes you're gonna want to use that and it's gonna be fun and you're gonna love every moment of it but mangara i talked a little bit about him before he's there for the little tricks it's kind of slow I find myself uh, sideboarding this card out the most. Mirren Crusader. He's a boss. He comes in, he hits hard, and nobody likes him outside of your deck. They, your opponent will try to kill this, this creature. It just can end games so quickly. Sanctum Prelate. Almost always put him on one. Cuts off Brainstorm, cuts up Sword to Plowshares, cuts off um, Fatal Push. There's so many targets for this guy when you put it on one. Pithing Needle, they try to Pithing Needle your Aether Vial. You don't want that. Nobody wants that. Well, your opponent might. But you don't want that. No. It's no fun for you. Prelate it. Um... And I went through the, um, I went through the artifacts already. So, Palace Jailer. I didn't like this card at first glance. I thought to myself, what is this mana inefficient, four mana exile target creature? But then comes the monarchy. He graces you as king of the table for a turn at least. Now. Drawing a card in white is amazing, and that is why we play him. We don't get to draw cards too often. Those blue players have it great. They draw cards all the time. We? Us white weenie players? We gotta we gotta take what we can get. Let me tell you. Gotta take what you can get. But Palace Jailer, he's good. Play him. It's the way to go. Let's look at the sideboard. Sideboard options. Now, this is where most of the debate 
goes. Like, everybody's going to debate about this. Nobody's going to agree. It's whatever your experience is with it. Enlightened tutor, you might look at it and be like, well, wait a minute. I'm searching up for an artifact or enchantment, but I'm revealing it and then putting it on top of my deck. What, what's good about that? Well, let me tell you. Doing it on your opponent's end step to get whatever you need to answer what they just did, that's why. Rest in peace. Um, say you need an Aether Vial on turn two. Um, they got rid of all your stone forges and you just, you're just you in crisis mode and you got to GTA your way out of it. It can get GTA. There's a lot of different options for this. Um, Pithing Needle. I, l I run a Pithing Needle in the sideboard. It's good for that. There's a lot of options. Containment Priest. I know you're probably thinking to yourself, Cameron, why didn't you tell me that this was going to be the ugliest deck tech in the world? Why are you running a thousand different versions of every card? Well, let me tell you. Magic the Gathering Online is expensive. And I don't want to pay out the nose for it, which I did pay out the nose for this deck. I don't want... I want to get this deck as cheap as I can so I can just play it. And any version of the card you see in this deck at the time that I built it was the cheapest card available. What else are we not good against? Sneak and show. So sneak and show, when you look at this, Emrakul, Grizzlebrand, these creatures can come out potentially on turn two, I think. One or two. I, I would I would find it rather difficult to come out on turn one, but it's possible. They run Lotus Petal. They could have a, a handful of Lotus Petals. This deck is tough. And this is another deck where Containment Priest really shines. Being able to Containment Priest at instant speed, instant speed, 2-2. Two, two. If a non-token creature would enter the battlefield and it wasn't cast... It's exiled instead. Get out of here. Go up to New York and be like, get out of here. I think I get my face beat in by somebody. Maybe. Let's talk about Disenchant. So many applications for this card. It's amazing. We're talking about Disenchant. It is such a critical piece in the sideboard. Like, you go up against Stoneforge every other deck. So... You're going to have that opposing GT that is just going to wreak havoc on your deck. I mean, an opposing GT is miserable. Miserable. Every other creature you have is X1. Flicker Wisp. Um, Thalia. You know. Sanctum Prelate's only a 2-2. Two -two. It only takes two counters to get rid of them. I mean, GT is just brutal. I will say, one little trick with GT is, if you have one on the board and your opponent has one on the board, look to block. Because your blocking damage is combat damage. So keep that in mind. It's a nice little trick. So if they're going to take out your creature with counters, you're going to take out their creatures too. Just make sure that you save those counters for their ne next attacking creature. Um, Disenchant is just so helpful. There's so many artifacts and enchantments you want to kill in Legacy, so play it. It's good. Before I even played this deck, I didn't even know what Holy Light was. I had to look it up. I looked on MTG Goldfish and saw the Death and Taxes list, and I saw Holy Light. I had no idea what that was. I was, I was looking at it like, what the heck is Holy Light? And I looked it up, and I saw this really, really ugly art. I, I'm sorry, I've... If, if I'm offending anybody, but it's pretty ugly. And I, and I read to myself, non-white creatures get minus one, minus one until end of turn. Now, what would I need that for? Oh, boy. Boy, 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 was I wrong. Then I met my nemesis. And he has a true name. True name nemesis. This guy is atrocious. He is such an annoying creature. It's so hard to kill him. I play against fish or merfolk for those who are not familiar. It's brutal. They're running four of these. If I play against merfolk, they're running four of these guys. 
I have a really hard time dealing with this guy. So Sword of Fire and Ice helps because then I can get through him. But ah, I'll tell you, sometimes you need a holy light to step on in and show you the way, show you the light. All right, so let's go ahead and finish up this deck tech. Um, we got Council's Judgment again. Just good, if not so efficient removal, but just solid removal. It gets rid of anything. Does not target. So, true name nemesis, I'm not targeting you. I'm voting for you. You're the most popular fish on the block. Vote. Um, yeah. Council's Judgment, I like two of them. Had a couple buddies of mine second guess it. I think it's worth two slots. It just answers everything. There's nothing it doesn't touch. Mirren Crusader, he's just kind of a beast. It's nice to have a double strike. He's, he's just a threat. We've talked about him in the deck. Sanctum Prelate, it's nice to have another one. When he's good, he's great. When he's uh, not so good, I usually don't side him in. Very rarely do I side him out, but I don't really side him in too often. Gideon, ally of Zendikar. I've seen a couple lists run him. I just wanted to try him out. To be honest with you, I really haven't had a chance to really see him shine, but I can imagine in you know, a heavy control list, if I'm able to plant this guy, Gideon is going to take it to town. Pithing Needle is just great against decks that are running really fast mana that you can't stop their turn two kill unless you drop a Pithing Needle on turn one to kind of slow them down. You know, Pithing that Mox Diamond or that Chrome Mox, stopping that fast mana. Let's take a look at this abomination that is Ad Nauseam Tendrils. I hate this deck. I run into it a couple times online. And it is not uncommon for me to die turn one. I don't know if Moto just has this favoritism towards Tendrils decks, but I can't tell you how many times I've run into this. And it's most likely just a casual queue. But I've run into it, and I die on turn one or two. So... Having Pithing Needle as an option to say, uh-uh, you're going to have to kill me on turn four. At least it gives me an opportunity to get a Thalia out there or to um, slow them down in different ways. But I don't know. This is where I'm on the boat whether or not I should play, be playing more than one Canonist in my sideboard and paper. That's what I'm doing. Maybe I should have two. I don't know. If you know in the comments section how much, if you've, do paper magic, how much you actually run into this, but it's brutal. Blah. And then the last piece is sort of light and shadow. I don't really run this in my list in paper. This is really for the online metagame. So the legacy tournaments in Grand Prix, New Jersey are six separate tournaments I'm going to be taking part in. It's going to be a lot of fun, but it gives me the opportunity to try out different sideboards. So I'm pretty excited about that. That should give me a good idea of what's effective in the current paper metagame. Well, thanks for checking out the deck tech. I really appreciate your views. Any comments that you can leave, I will check and try to get back to you. And really just overall, thank you for viewing my channel. I hope you like the content. Hit that like button on this video and don't forget to subscribe if you want to hear more about, you know, my journey through death and taxes legacy. So this is Cameron with Mainline Magic. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. We really appreciate your views. Don't forget to like and subscribe to watch Cameron and myself poo anytime, any place on your mobile device and shit. Holla.